Adolf Hitler born April 20, 1889 and died April 30, 1945 was an Austrian-born German politician who was the dictator of Germany from 1933 until his death in 1945. He rose to power as the leader of the Nazi party, becoming the chancellor in 1933 and then assuming the title of Führer und Reichskanzler in 1934. During his dictatorship, he initiated World War II in Europe by invading Poland on 1. September 1939. He was closely involved in military operations throughout the war and was central to the perpetration of the Holocaust, the genocide of about 6 million Jews and millions of other victims. Hitler was born in Austria-Hungary and was raised near Linz. He lived in Vienna later in the first decade of the 1900s and moved to Germany in 1913. He was decorated during his service in the German Army in World War I. In 1919, he joined the German Workers' Party DAP, the precursor of the Nazi Party, and was appointed leader of the Nazi Party in 1921. In 1923, he attempted to seize governmental power in a failed coup in Munich and was imprisoned with a sentence of five years. In jail, he dictated the first volume of his autobiography and political manifesto Mein Kampf My Struggle. After his early release in 1924, Hitler gained popular support by attacking the Treaty of Versailles and promoting pan-Germanism, anti-Semitism and anti-communism with charismatic oratory and Nazi propaganda. He frequently denounced international capitalism and communism as part of a Jewish conspiracy. By November 1932, the Nazi party held the most seats in the German Reichstag, but did not have a majority. As a result, no party was able to form a majority parliamentary coalition in support of a candidate for chancellor. Former Chancellor Franz von Papen and other conservative leaders persuaded President Paul von Hindenburg to appoint Hitler as chancellor on January 30, 1933. Shortly after, the Reichstag passed the Enabling Act of 1933 which began the process of transforming the Weimar Republic into Nazi Germany, a one-party dictatorship based on the totalitarian and autocratic ideology of Nazism. Hitler aimed to eliminate Jews from Germany and establish a new order to counter what he saw as the injustice of the post-World War I international order dominated by Britain and France. His first six years in power resulted in rapid economic recovery from the Great Depression, the abrogation of restrictions imposed on Germany after World War I, and the annexation of territories inhabited by millions of ethnic Germans, which gave him significant popular support. Hitler sought Lebensraum lit living space for the German people in Eastern Europe, and his aggressive foreign policy is considered the primary cause of World War II in Europe. He directed large-scale rearmament. And, on September 1, 1939, invaded Poland, resulting in Britain and France declaring war on Germany. In June 1941, Hitler ordered an invasion of the Soviet Union. By the end of 1941, German forces and the European Axis powers occupied most of Europe and North Africa. These gains were gradually reversed after 1941, and in 1945 the Allied armies defeated the German army. On April 29, 1945, he married his longtime lover, Eva Braun, in the Farabunker in Berlin. Less than two days later, the couple committed suicide to avoid capture by the Soviet Red Army. Their corpses were burned. Historian and biographer Ian Kershaw describes Hitler as the embodiment of modern political evil. Under Hitler's leadership and racially motivated ideology, the Nazi regime was responsible for the genocide of about 6 million Jews and millions of other victims, whom he and his followers deemed untermention subhumans or socially undesirable. Hitler and the Nazi regime were also responsible for the killing of an estimated 19.3 million civilians and prisoners of war. In addition, 28.7 million soldiers and civilians died as a result of military action in the European theater. The number of civilians killed during World War II was unprecedented in warfare, and the casualties constitute the deadliest conflict in history. Hitler's father, a Louis Hitler Sr. 1837-1903, was the illegitimate child of Maria Anna Skickgruber. The baptismal register did not show the name of his father, and Alois initially bore his mother's surname, Skickgruber. In 1842, Johann George Heidler married Alois's mother. Alois was brought up in the family of Heidler's brother, Johann Nepomuk Heidler. In 1876, 
Alois was made legitimate and his baptismal record annotated by a priest to register Johann George Heidler as Alois's father recorded as George Hitler. Alois then assumed the surname Hitler, also spelled Heidler, Hutler, or Hitler. The name is probably based on the German word hut lit, hut, and likely has the meaning one who lives in a hut. Nazi official Hans Frank suggested that Alois's mother had been employed as a housekeeper by a Jewish family in Graz, and that the family's 19-year-old son Leopold Frankenberger had fathered Alois. No Frankenberger was registered in Graz during that period, no record has been produced of Leopold Frankenberger's existence, and Jewish residency in Styria had been illegal for nearly 400 years and would not become legal again until decades after Alois's birth so historians dismiss the claim that Alois's father was Jewish. Adolf Hitler was born on April 20, 1889 in Braunau in, a town in Austria-Hungary in present-day Austria, close to the border with the German Empire. He was the fourth of six children born to Alois Hitler and his third wife, Clara Palslow. Three of Hitler's siblings, Gustav, Ida, and Otto died in infancy. Also living in the household were Alois's children from his second marriage, Alois Jr. born 1882 and Angela born 1883. When Hitler was three, the family moved to Passau, Germany. There he acquired the distinctive Lower Bavarian dialect, rather than Austrian German, which marked his speech throughout his life. The family returned to Austria and settled in Leonding in 1894, and in June 1895 Alois retired to Hayfield, near Lambach, where he farmed and kept bees. Hitler attended Volksschule a state-funded primary school in nearby Fischlem. The move to Hayfield coincided with the onset of intense father-son conflicts caused by Hitler's refusal to conform to the strict discipline of his school. His father beat him, although his mother tried to protect him. Alois Hitler's farming efforts at Hayfield ended in failure, and in 1897 the family moved to Lambach. The eight-year-old Hitler took singing lessons, sang in the church choir, and even considered becoming a priest. In 1898 the family returned permanently to Leon Ding. Hitler was deeply affected by the death of his younger brother Edmund, who died in 1900 from measles. Hitler changed from a confident, outgoing, conscientious student to a morose, detached boy who constantly fought with his father and teachers. Alois had made a successful career in the Customs Bureau and wanted his son to follow in his footsteps. Hitler later dramatized an episode from this period when his father took him to visit a customs office, depicting it as an event that gave rise to an unforgiving antagonism between father and son, who were both strong-willed. Ignoring his son's desire to attend a classical high school and become an artist, Alois sent Hitler to the real Schule in Linz in September 1900. Hitler rebelled against this decision, and in Mein Kampf states that he intentionally did poorly in school, hoping that once his father saw what little progress I was making at the technical school he would let me devote myself to my dream. Like many Austrian Germans, Hitler began to develop German nationalist ideas from a young age. He expressed loyalty only to Germany, despising the declining Habsburg monarchy and its rule over an ethnically variegated empire. Hitler and his friends used the greeting Heil, and sang the Deutschland Lied, instead of the Austrian imperial anthem. After Alois's sudden death on January 3, 1903, Hitler's performance at school deteriorated and his mother allowed him to leave. He enrolled at the real Schule in Steyr in September 1904, where his behavior and performance improved. In 1905, after passing a repeat of the final exam, Hitler left the school without any ambitions for further education or clear plans for a career. In 1907, Hitler left Linz to live and study fine art in Vienna, financed by orphans benefits and support from his mother. He applied for admission to the Academy of Fine Arts Vienna but was rejected twice. The director suggested Hitler should apply to the School of Architecture, but he lacked the necessary academic credentials because he had not finished secondary school. On December 21, 1907, his mother died of breast cancer at the age of 47, when he himself was 18. In 1909 Hitler ran out of money and was forced to live a bohemian life in homeless shelters and a men's dormitory. He earned money as a casual laborer and by painting and selling watercolors of Vienna's sites. During his time in Vienna, he pursued a growing passion for architecture and music, attending 10 performances of Lohengrin, his favorite Wagner opera. 
It was in Vienna that Hitler first became exposed to racist rhetoric. Populists such as Mayor Karl Luiger exploited the climate of virulent anti-Semitism and occasionally espoused German nationalist notions for political effect. German nationalism had a particularly widespread following in the Maria Hilf district, where Hitler lived. George Ritter von Schönerer became a major influence on Hitler. He also developed an admiration for Martin Luther. Hitler read local newspapers such as Deutsches Volksblatt that fanned prejudice and played on Christian fears of being swamped by an influx of Eastern European Jews. He read newspapers and pamphlets that published the thoughts of philosophers and theoreticians such as Houston Stuart Chamberlain, Charles Darwin, Friedrich Nietzsche, Gustav Elie Bone and Arthur Schopenhauer. The origin and development of Hitler's anti-Semitism remains a matter of debate. His friend, August Kubizak, claimed that Hitler was a confirmed anti-Semite before he left Linz. However, historian Bridget Hammond describes Kubizak's claim as problematical. While Hitler states in Mein Kampf that he first became an anti-Semite in Vienna, Reinhold Hanisch, who helped him sell his paintings, disagrees. Hitler had dealings with Jews while living in Vienna. Historian Richard J. Evans states that historians now generally agree that his notorious, murderous anti-Semitism emerged well. After Germany's defeat in World War I, as a product of the paranoid stab in the back explanation for the catastrophe, Hitler received the final part of his father's estate in May 1913 and moved to Munich, Germany. When he was conscripted into the Austro-Hungarian army, he journeyed to Salzburg on February 5, 1914 for medical assessment. After he was deemed unfit for service, he returned to Munich. Hitler later claimed that he did not wish to serve the Habsburg Empire because of the mixture of races in its army and his belief that the collapse of Austria-Hungary was imminent. In August 1914, at the outbreak of World War I, Hitler was living in Munich and voluntarily enlisted in the Bavarian army. According to a 1924 report by the Bavarian authorities, allowing Hitler to serve was almost certainly an administrative error, since as an Austrian citizen, he should have been returned to Austria. Posted to the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment 16 First Company of the List Regiment, he served as a dispatch runner on the Western Front in France and Belgium, spending nearly half his time at the regimental headquarters in Forns and Webs, well behind the front lines. He was present at the First Battle of Ypres, the Battle of the Somme, the Battle of Arras, and the Battle of Passchendaele, and was wounded at the Somme. He was decorated for bravery, receiving the Iron Cross, second class, in 1914, on a recommendation by Lieutenant Hugo Gutmann, Hitler's Jewish superior, he received the Iron Cross, first class on August 4, 1918, a decoration rarely awarded to one of Hitler's Gefreiter rank. He received the Black Wound Badge on May 18, 1918. During his service at headquarters, Hitler pursued his artwork, drawing cartoons, and instructions for an army newspaper. During the Battle of the Somme in October 1916, he was wounded in the left thigh when a shell exploded in the dispatch runner's dugout. Hitler spent almost two months in hospital at Bielitz, returning to his regiment on March 5, 1917. On October 15, 1918, he was temporarily blinded in a mustard gas attack and was hospitalized in Payswalk. While there, Hitler learned of Germany's defeat, and by his own account, upon receiving this news, he suffered a second bout of blindness. Hitler described the war as the greatest of all experiences, and was praised by his commanding officers for his bravery. His wartime experience reinforced his German patriotism and he was shocked by Germany's capitulation in November 1918. His bitterness over the collapse of the war effort began to shape his ideology. Like other German nationalists, he believed the Dolch Stoßlegen stab in the back myth, which claimed that the German army, undefeated in the field, had been stabbed in the back on the home front by civilian leaders, Jews, Marxists, and those who signed the armistice that ended the fighting later dubbed the November Criminals. The Treaty of Versailles stipulated that Germany had to relinquish several of its territories and demilitarize the Rhineland. The treaty imposed economic sanctions and levied heavy reparations on the country. Many Germans saw the treaty as an unjust humiliation. They especially objected to Article 231, which they interpreted as declaring Germany responsible for the war. The Versailles Treaty and the economic, social, and political conditions in Germany after the war were later exploited by Hitler for political gain. After World War I, Hitler returned to Munich. 
Without formal education or career prospects, he remained in the army. In July 1919 he was appointed. Verbein Dungsman intelligence agent of an Aufklärungskommando, reconnaissance unit of the Reichswehr, assigned to influence other soldiers and to infiltrate the German Workers' Party DAP. At a DAP meeting on September 12, 1919, party chairman Anton Drexler was impressed with Hitler's oratorical skills. He gave him a copy of his pamphlet My Political Awakening, which contained anti-Semitic, nationalist, anti-capitalist, and anti-Marxist ideas. On the orders of his army superiors, Hitler applied to join the party, and within a week was accepted as party member 555 The party began counting membership at 500 to give the impression they were a much larger party. Hitler made his earliest known written statement about the Jewish question in a September 16, 1919 letter to Adolf Jmlichnow, known as the Jmlich Letter. In the letter, Hitler argues that the aim of the government must unshakably be the removal of the Jews altogether. At the DAP, Hitler met Dietrich Eckhart, one of the party's founders and a member of the Occult Thule Society. Eckhart became Hitler's mentor, exchanging ideas with him and introducing him to a wide range of Munich society. To increase its appeal, the DAP changed its name to the National Socialistisch Deutsche Arbeiterpartei National Socialist German Workers' Party NSDAP, known colloquially as the Nazi Party. Hitler designed the party's banner of a swastika in a white circle on a red background. Hitler was discharged from the army on March 31, 1920 and began working full-time for the party. The party headquarters was in Munich, a hotbed of anti-government German nationalists determined to crush Marxism and undermine the Weimar Republic. In February 1921 already highly effective at crowd manipulation he spoke to a crowd of over 6,000. To publicize the meeting, two truckloads of party supporters drove around Munich waving swastika flags and distributing leaflets. Hitler soon gained notoriety for his rowdy polemic speeches against the Treaty of Versailles, rival politicians, and especially against Marxists and Jews. In June 1921, while Hitler and Eckhart were on a fundraising trip to Berlin, a mutiny broke out within the Nazi party in Munich. Members of its executive committee wanted to merge with the Nuremberg-based German Socialist Party DSPL Hitler returned to Munich on July 11 and angrily tendered his resignation. The committee members realized that the resignation of their leading public figure and speaker would mean the end of the party. Hitler announced he would rejoin on the condition that he would replace Drexler as party chairman, and that the party headquarters would remain in Munich. The committee agreed, and he rejoined the party on July 26 as member 3680. Hitler continued to face some opposition. Within the Nazi party, opponents of Hitler in the leadership had Hermann Esser expelled from the party, and they printed 3,000 copies of a pamphlet attacking Hitler as a traitor to the party. In the following days, Hitler spoke to several packed houses and defended himself and Esser, to thunderous applause. His strategy proved successful, and at a special party congress on July 29, he was granted absolute powers as party chairman, replacing Drexler, by a vote of 533 to 1. Hitler's vitriolic beer hall speeches began attracting regular audiences. A demagogue, he became adept at using populist themes, including the use of scapegoats, who were blamed for his listeners' economic hardships. Hitler used personal magnetism and an understanding of crowd psychology to his advantage while engaged in public speaking. Historians have noted the hypnotic effect of his rhetoric on large audiences, and of his eyes in small groups. Alphonse Hack, a former member of the Hitler Youth, recalled, We erupted into a frenzy of nationalistic pride that bordered on hysteria. For minutes on end, we shouted at the top of our lungs, with tears streaming down our faces, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, Sieg Heil, from that moment on, I belonged to Adolf Hitler body and soul. Early followers included Rudolf Hess, former Air Force ace Hermann Göring, and Army Captain Ernst Röhm. Röhm became head of the Nazis' paramilitary organization, the Sturmabtia Lung SA, Stormtroopers, which protected meetings and attacked political opponents. A critical influence on Hitler's thinking during this period was the Aufbau, Vereinigung, a conspiratorial group of white Russian exiles and early Nazis. The group, financed with funds channeled from wealthy industrialists, introduced Hitler to the idea of a Jewish conspiracy, linking international finance with Bolshevism. In 1923, Hitler enlisted the help of World War I General Erich Ludendorff for an attempted coup known as the Beer Hall Putsch. 
the Nazi party used Italian fascism as a model for their appearance and policies. Hitler wanted to emulate Benito Mussolini's march on Rome of 1922 by staging his own coup in Bavaria, to be followed by a challenge to the government in Berlin. Hitler and Ludendorff sought the support of Staatskommissar, State Commissioner Gustav Ritter von Kahr, Bavaria's de facto ruler. However, Kahr, along with police chief Hans Ritter von Cisse and Reichswehr General Otto von Lasso, wanted to install a nationalist dictatorship without Hitler. On November 8, 1923, Hitler and the SA stormed a public meeting of 3,000 people organized by Carr in the Bürgerbrockeller, a beer hall in Munich. Interrupting Carr's speech, he announced that the National Revolution had begun and declared the formation of a new government with Ludendorff. Retiring to a back room, Hitler, with handgun drawn, demanded and got the support of Carr, Cisse, and Lasso. Hitler's forces initially succeeded in occupying the local Reichswehr and police headquarters, but Carr and his cohorts quickly withdrew their support. Neither the army, nor the state police, joined forces with Hitler. The next day, Hitler and his followers marched from the Beer Hall to the Bavarian War Ministry to overthrow the Bavarian government, but police dispersed them. Sixteen Nazi party members and four police officers were killed in the failed coup. Hitler fled to the home of Ernst Hanfstuendl and by some accounts contemplated suicide. He was depressed but calm when arrested on November 11, 1923 for high treason. His trial before the Special People's Court in Munich began in February 1924, and Alfred Rosenberg became temporary leader of the Nazi party. On April 1, Hitler was sentenced to five years imprisonment at Landsberg prison. There, he received friendly treatment from the guards, and was allowed mail from supporters and regular visits by party comrades. Pardoned by the Bavarian Supreme Court, he was released from jail on December 20, 1924, against the state. Prosecutor's objections. Including time on remand, Hitler served just over one year in prison. While at Landsberg, Hitler dictated most of the first volume of Mein Kampf My Struggle, originally entitled Four and a Half Years of Struggle Against Lies, Stupidity, and Cowardice at first to his chauffeur, Emil Maurice, and then to his deputy, Rudolf Hess. The book, dedicated to Thule Society member Dietrich Eckhart, was an autobiography and exposition of his ideology. The book laid out Hitler's plans for transforming German society into one based on race. Throughout the book, Jews are equated with germs and presented as the international poisoners of society. According to Hitler's ideology, the only solution was their extermination. While Hitler did not describe exactly how this was to be accomplished, his inherent genocidal thrust is undeniable, according to Ian Kershaw. Published in two volumes in 1925 and 1926, Mein Kampf sold 228,000 copies between 1925 and 1932. One million copies were sold in 1933, Hitler's first year in office. Shortly before Hitler was eligible for parole, the Bavarian government attempted to have him deported to Austria. The Austrian federal chancellor rejected the request on the specious grounds that his service in the German army made his Austrian citizenship void. In response, Hitler formally renounced his Austrian citizenship on April 7, 1925. At the time of Hitler's release from prison, politics in Germany had become less combative and the economy had improved, limiting Hitler's opportunities for political agitation. As a result of the failed Beer Hall Putsch, the Nazi Party and its affiliated organizations were banned in Bavaria. In a meeting with the Prime Minister of Bavaria Heinrich held on January 4, 1925, Hitler agreed to respect the state's authority and promised that he would seek political power only through the democratic process. The meeting paved the way for the ban on the Nazi party to be lifted on February 16. However, after an inflammatory speech he gave on February 27, Hitler was barred from public speaking by the Bavarian authorities, a ban that remained in place until 1927. To advance his political ambitions in spite of the ban, Hitler appointed Gregor Strasser, Otto Strasser, and Joseph Goebbels to organize and enlarge the Nazi party in northern Germany. Gregor Strasser steered a more independent political course, emphasizing the socialist elements of the party's program. The stock market in the United States crashed on October 24, 1929. The impact in Germany was dire, millions were thrown out of work and several major banks collapsed. 
Hitler and the Nazi party prepared to take advantage of the emergency to gain support for their party. They promised to repudiate the Versailles Treaty, strengthen the economy, and provide jobs. The Great Depression provided a political opportunity for Hitler. Germans were ambivalent about the Parliamentary Republic, which faced challenges from right and left-wing extremists. The moderate political parties were increasingly unable to stem the tide of extremism, and the German referendum of 1929 helped to elevate Nazi ideology. The elections of September 1930 resulted in the breakup of a grand coalition and its replacement with a minority cabinet. Its leader, Chancellor Heinrich Brüning of the Center Party, governed through emergency decrees from President Paul von Hindenburg. Governance by decree became the new norm and paved the way for authoritarian forms of government. The Nazi Party rose from obscurity to win 18.3% of the vote and 107 parliamentary seats in the 1930 election, becoming the second largest party in parliament. Hitler made a prominent appearance at the trial of two Reichswehr officers, Lieutenants Richard Schuringer and Hans Luden, in late 1930. Both were charged with membership in the Nazi Party, at that time illegal for Reichswehr personnel. The prosecution argued that the Nazi Party was an extremist party, prompting defense lawyer Hans Frank to call on Hitler to testify. On September 25, 1930, Hitler testified that his party would pursue political power solely through democratic elections, which won him many supporters in the officer corps. Brüning's austerity measures brought little economic improvement and were extremely unpopular. Hitler exploited this by targeting his political messages specifically at people who had been affected by the inflation of the 1920s and the Depression, such as farmers, war veterans, and the middle class. Although Hitler had terminated his Austrian citizenship in 1925, he did not acquire German citizenship for almost seven years. This meant that he was stateless, legally unable to run for public office, and still faced the risk of deportation. On February 25, 1932, the Interior Minister of Brunswick, Dietrich Klages, who was a member of the Nazi Party, appointed Hitler as administrator for the state's delegation to the Reichsrat in Berlin, making Hitler a citizen of Brunswick, and thus of Germany. Hitler ran against Hindenburg in the 1932 presidential elections. A speech to the Industry Club in Dusseldorf on January 27, 1932 won him support from many of Germany's most powerful industrialists. Hindenburg had support from various nationalist, monarchist, Catholic, and Republican parties, and some social democrats. Hitler used the campaign slogan Hitler über Deutschland Hitler over Germany, a reference to his political ambitions and his campaigning by aircraft. He was one of the first politicians to use aircraft travel for political purposes, and used it effectively. Hitler came in second in both rounds of the election, garnering more than 35 percenter of the vote in the final election. Although he lost to Hindenburg, this election established Hitler as a strong force in German politics. The absence of an effective government prompted two influential politicians, Franz von Papen and Alfred Hugenberg, along with several other industrialists and businessmen, to write a letter to Hindenburg. The signers urged Hindenburg to appoint Hitler as leader of a government independent from parliamentary parties, which could turn into a movement that would enrapture millions of people. Hindenburg reluctantly agreed to appoint Hitler as chancellor after two further parliamentary elections in July and November 1932, had not resulted in the formation of a majority government. Hitler headed a short-lived coalition government formed by the Nazi party which had the most seats in the Reichstag and Hugenberg's party, the German National People's Party DNVP. On January 30, 1933, the new cabinet was sworn in during a brief ceremony in Hindenburg's office. The Nazi party gained three posts, Hitler was named Chancellor. Wilhelm Frick Minister of the Interior, and Hermann Göring Minister of the Interior for Prussia. Hitler had insisted on the ministerial positions as a way to gain control over the police in much of Germany. As Chancellor, Hitler worked against attempts by the Nazi party's opponents to build a majority government. Because of the political stalemate, he asked Hindenburg to again dissolve the Reichstag, and elections were scheduled for early March. On February 27, 1933, the Reichstag building was set on fire. Göring blamed a communist plot, because Dutch communist Marinus van der Lubbe was found in incriminating circumstances inside the burning building. Until the 1960s, 
Some historians including William L. Shire and Alan Bullock thought the Nazi party itself was responsible. The current consensus of nearly all historians is that van der Lubbe actually set the fire alone. At Hitler's urging, Hindenburg responded by signing the Reichstag fire decree of February 28, drafted by the Nazis, which suspended basic rights and allowed detention without trial. The decree was permitted under Article 48 of the Weimar Constitution, which gave the president the power to take emergency measures to protect public safety and order. Activities of the German Communist Party KPD were suppressed, and some 4,000 KPD members were arrested. In addition to political campaigning, the Nazi Party engaged in paramilitary violence and the spread of anti-communist propaganda in the days preceding the election. On Election Day, March 6, 1933, the Nazi Party's share of the vote increased to 43.9 percent, and the party acquired the largest number of seats in Parliament. Hitler's party failed to secure an absolute majority, necessitating another coalition with the DNVP. On March 21, 1933, the new Reichstag was constituted with an opening ceremony at the Garrison Church in Potsdam. This day of Potsdam was held to demonstrate unity between the Nazi movement and the old Prussian elite and military. Hitler appeared in a morning coat and humbly greeted Hindenburg. To achieve full political control despite not having an absolute majority in parliament, Hitler's government brought the Ermachtigungsgesetz Enabling Act to a vote in the newly elected Reichstag. The act officially titled the Gesetz zur Behebung der not von Vokuendi Reich law to remedy the distress of people and Reich gave Hitler's cabinet the power to enact laws without the consent of the Reichstag for four years. These laws could with certain exceptions deviate from the constitution. Since it would affect the constitution, the enabling act required a two-thirds majority to pass. Leaving nothing to chance, the Nazis used the provisions of the Reichstag fire decree to arrest all 81 communist deputies in spite of their virulent campaign against the party. The Nazis had allowed the KPD to contest the election and prevent several Social Democrats from attending. On March 23, 1933, the Reichstag assembled at the Kroll Opera House under turbulent circumstances. Ranks of SA men served as guards inside the building, while large groups outside opposing the proposed legislation shouted slogans and threats towards the arriving members of parliament. After Hitler verbally promised Center Party leader Ludwig Koss that Hindenburg would retain his power of veto, Koss announced the Center Party would support the Enabling Act. The act passed by a vote of 444 to 94, with all parties except the Social Democrats voting in favor. The Enabling Act, along with the Reichstag Fire Decree, transformed Hitler's government into a de facto legal dictatorship. By late 1944, both the Red Army and the Western Allies were advancing into Germany. Recognizing the strength and determination of the Red Army, Hitler decided to use his remaining mobile reserves against the American and British armies, which he perceived as far weaker. On December 16, he launched the Ardennes Offensive to incite disunity among the Western Allies and perhaps convince them to join his fight against the Soviets. After some temporary successes, the offensive failed. With much of Germany in ruins in January 1945, Hitler spoke on the radio, however grave as the crisis may be at this moment, it will, despite everything, be mastered by our unalterable will. Acting on his view that Germany's military failures meant it had forfeited its right to survive as a nation, Hitler ordered the destruction of all German industrial infrastructure before it could fall into Allied hands. Minister for Armaments Albert Speer was entrusted with executing this scorched earth policy, but he secretly disobeyed the order. Hitler's hope to negotiate peace with the United States and Britain was encouraged by the death of US President Franklin D. Roosevelt on April 12, 1945, but contrary to his expectations, this caused no rift among the Allies. On April 20, his 56th birthday, Hitler made his last trip from the Farabunker Führer's shelter to the surface. In the ruined garden of the Reich Chancellery, he awarded iron crosses to boy soldiers of the Hitler Youth, who were now fighting the Red Army at the front near Berlin. By April 21, Georgi Zhukov's first Belorussian front had broken through the defenses of General Gotthard Heinrich I's Army Group Vistula during the Battle of the Silo Heights and advanced to the outskirts of Berlin. In denial about the dire situation, Hitler placed his hopes on the undermanned and under-equipped Army Tia Lung Steiner Army Detachment Steiner, commanded by Felix Steiner. 
Hitler ordered Steiner to attack the northern flank of the salient, while the German 9th Army was ordered to attack northward in a pincer attack. During a military conference on April 22, Hitler asked about Steiner's offensive. He was told that the attack had not been launched and that the Soviets had entered Berlin. Hitler asked everyone except Wilhelm Keitel, Alfred Jodl, Hans Krebs, and Wilhelm Bergdorf to leave the room, then launched into a tirade against the treachery and incompetence of his commanders, culminating in his declaration for the first time that everything was lost. He announced that he would stay in Berlin until the end and then shoot himself. By April 23rd the Red Army had surrounded Berlin, and Goebbels made a proclamation urging its citizens to defend the city. That same day, Goring sent a telegram from Berchtesgaden, arguing that since Hitler was isolated in Berlin, Goring should assume leadership of Germany. Goring set a deadline, after which he would consider Hitler incapacitated. Hitler responded by having Goring arrested, and in his last will and testament of April 29, he removed Goring from all government positions. On April 28 Hitler discovered that Himmler, who had left Berlin on 20 April, was trying to negotiate a surrender to the Western Allies. He ordered Himmler's arrest and had Hermann Fiegelein Himmler's SS representative at Hitler's HQ in Berlin shot. After midnight on the night of 28 to 29 April, Hitler married Eva Braun in a small civil ceremony in the Fahrer bunker. Later that afternoon, Hitler was informed that Mussolini had been executed by the Italian resistance. Movement on the previous day, this presumably increased his determination to avoid capture. On April 30, 1945, Soviet troops were within a block or two of the Reich Chancellery when Hitler shot himself in the head and Braun bit into a cyanide capsule. Their corpses were carried outside to the garden behind the Reich Chancellery, where they were placed in a bomb crater, doused with petrol, and set on fire as the Red Army shelling continued. Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz and Joseph Goebbels assumed Hitler's roles as head of state and chancellor respectively. Berlin surrendered on May 2. The remains of Joseph and Magda Goebbels, the six Goebbels children, General Hans Krebs, and Hitler's dogs were repeatedly buried and exhumed. Hitler and Braun's remains were alleged to have been moved as well, but this is most likely Soviet disinformation. There is no evidence that any actual bodily remains of Hitler or Braun with the exception of the dental bridges were found by the Soviets, which could be identified as their remains. While news of Hitler's death spread quickly, a death certificate was not issued until 1956, after a lengthy investigation to collect testimony from 42 witnesses. Hitler's demise.